Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mavani. I am sure you all are enjoying your Sunday. Dear friends, let's have a positive start first. Then we'll go through what we have got on our table. A person who won't read has no advantage over one who can't read. Has been said by Mark Twain and we can say that both these persons are on same page as far as reading is concerned or as far as grasping or grabbing new knowledge is concerned. Now, the special topic that I have got for you guys is called artificial meat. It is also known as lab meat or a meat that is produced or grown in laboratories. Uh, the way things are sorted out or where things are produced is that a handful of uh, progenitors are selected and uh, their cells are accumulated. And then this whole thing will go through a lab process and that's how you get artificial meat. Uh, so no animals are hurt. No animals are killed here. Uh, in, in the production of artificial meat and this is one of the reasons why we find that Menka Gandhiji uh, I'm sure you all are aware about this thing that uh, she is uh, Minister of uh, Women and Child Development of course Union Minister and uh, she has uh, throughout her life uh, been an activist you know she has uh, uh, she has uh, campaigned and if I'm not wrong uh, she has wrote a couple of books as well on uh, on this issue you know uh, on environmental and ethical issues ar ar arising out of or associated with this meat consumption and uh, recent patterns if we follow recent patterns of our country then we find that meat consumption has gone up in our country uh, now there is uh, you know this uh, stereotype as well and i would like to clarify this thing here that uh, it's a complete stereotype if uh, someone is saying that a person who is consum you know, consuming meat, that person or a non-vegetarian person is not ethical or only the veggies are uh, ethical and non-veggies are not ethical, then that is not right. That is a pure stereotype. You find good and bad people, you know, in every walk of life. So there is no set benchmark, you know, to say that vegetarians are good and non-vegetarians are not good in fact if you if you go through if you understand uh, food security and if you understand uh, this uh, you know if you learn about uh, this uh, global food chain then you find that see if uh, say for example from tomorrow if everyone you know if each and every person on this planet earth uh, if human beings start consuming just vegetarian items right then there will be a big mismatch in this supply and demand of food items apart from that if you look at it from health point of view uh, then there are many countries out there you don't find a variety of uh, vegetarian items over there so they have to mix and match you know they have to have both uh, meat as well as fruits and veggies on their plate to have this uh, balanced uh, diet or they can you can say for their nutritional security just food security is not enough we have seen in our country that we have achieved food security but now what we are trying to achieve is uh, this nutrition security because uh, too much of carbs you know if you are eating too much of rice and dal only and if you are not consuming say for example milk or vegetarian items or vegetables and fruits and other items maybe egg made items or meat made items it all depends on your culture in which part of our country that you are living uh, i'll give you one example of uh, swami vivekananda he used to consume fish uh, but uh, if you go to uh, west bengal and bangladesh and this portion of bangla region you find that uh, fish is something that has always been you know part of their uh, diet and uh, if you visit gujarat and some other places then predominantly the population is vegetarian so it all depends you know it has a deep relationship with your geography it has a deep relationship with your uh, uh, you know based on geography your way of life and then your history uh, will follow that track as well so uh, we have to analyze this thing from 360 degree so i hope uh, this thing is clear that uh, it's uh, there is nothing you know uh, there is nothing wrong in being pure vegetarian or pure non vegetarian or mix and match thing uh, it all depends. Uh, now, the thing is, the reason why this particular topic is important is because uh, from environmental point of view, from ethical point of view, we find that uh, when I say ethical, I'm not talking about spiritual or religious uh, point of view, right? Uh, 
I am no one to talk about spiritual and uh, religious topics but here yes of course if we look at it from from economic point of view from you know societal point of view benefits for our society for our environment then then again you can say that if you are looking after environment then of course you are doing something that is ethical isn't it so uh, what we have to do is uh, for for this natural meat right we have to rear livestock we have to look after them they need food uh, they need other things and uh, the sad thing is that uh, if we go through these facts uh, then we find that 15 percent 15 percent of all global greenhouse gases are coming from livestock we talk about cars when it comes to pollution we talk about vehicles and industries and other things but we hardly talk about this sort of things and i strongly believe that just in case you know if you if you find a question in your mains examination or in your interview and if you find something associated with this thing and this is a very important topic as far as your syllabus is concerned i'm going to ask you a question by the end of this discussion so this is the reason i'm not opening here too much um right so what i was saying is that if you find a question may it be in your mains or in any exam right if you if you find a question and if a uh, descriptive one of course and if you add this point if it is suitable to add it over there that uh, livestock are big source of or 15 percent of this global greenhouse gases are coming from livestock and this is one of the reason why we need to look for artificial meat just one line when we are talking about pollution and if you add this then of course the person who's going to read your answer that person will realize he will he or she will you know identify this thing that this point is totally different from points that are written by other aspirants in the same exam and there are high chances that you will leave a good mark or a sort of good impression on that person and uh, that person will expect you know something similar or even if uh, he or she will not expect he or she will realize this thing that this person this candidate has you know it will leave a sort of small smile on their face and a next uh, answer uh, this memory of yours will be there you know whether you like it or not it's a psychologically proven thing i have source as well you can refer to uh, this book called uh, thinking fast and slow written by uh, daniel kahneman and uh, daniel kahneman is uh, 2002 nobel laureate uh, he got nobel prize in uh, economics and uh, if you go through his book he has explained all these things uh, how it works with practical examples of course it's a uh, very interesting book but, book but it will take time for you as well if you if you don't have this background understanding then it will it will take your time but it's worth uh, you know it's worth it uh, this book so i have this reference and based on this thing i'm telling you this thing so it's not that this i'm just saying you that assumptionary things here um first the second thing that i would like to highlight here is that one kilo right one kilo of mutton needs eight thousand liters of water I would be wondering how from the very birth uh, till this goat will you know reach its maturity stage where a particular goat is slaughtered for meat then if you calculate the amount of water that uh, that particular goat has consumed you know throughout this journey then you will find that for one kilo eight thousand liter this is called hidden resources right that is something that we cannot see but that is there to produce a thing you have you know contributed or this much of raw material was required so 8000 liter of water so it's something that is not uh, uh, that ethical if i can say or that environmental friendly uh, judging by the things that are going on in our country as far as water and land resources are concerned and uh, this is uh, this could be a new topic for us but it's not a big thing in america because in near future we are going to see this uh, again a new name it is also known as clean meat or uh, lab meat or clean meat clean meat will be there uh, or will be available um, in various different places in usa in their uh, supermarkets and there are big uh, tycoons who have invested a huge amount of money after it uh, bill gates is there you have richard branson who is you know virgin airlines famous person so they have uh, invested in this industry at present of course uh, this clean meat or lab meat is expensive but uh, the more mass production m a w s right the more mass production uh you know production techniques we will develop or technologies we will develop them better 
uh, we are going to be as far as the price is concerned and uh, that could be a time where everyone would be able to afford this thing uh, so so this is a very promising thing about artificial meat as far as india you know that the land and water are stressed resources at present and lab meat could be a substantial alternative to traditional meat uh, this will also end if we if we look at it from a social point of view then it will end this beef bans and anti meat crusades and violent politics and lynching and other things that we have observed in in recent past uh, it will be if you talk about ecosystem looking after ecosystem and all those things then it will be uh, it will be beneficial for uh, for this uh, food chain too food chain in the sense uh, this animal food chain uh, and uh, uh, that's that's basically everything what we need to look after is uh, taste right uh, if this artificial meat is not tasty and if it is going to be you know a bit difficult to uh, uh to cook it and if there are this sort of uh, problems associated with it then it, it it won't pick up so those who are you know uh, developing this thing they have to work on this side as well that they have to make sure that it's easy cook thing its uh, taste is uh, uh, you can say comparatively okay or better than uh, traditional meat and uh, if this benefits uh, health benefits and nutritional benefits and other things if we can achieve all these things then it can of course be a big thing and it's going to be helpful for every one of us with this dear friends if you want to download the pdf of today's lecture you will get it from a facebook page and twitter handle don't forget to check out studyiq.com for our other pen drive and tablet courses now dear friends uh, Let's go through important news items. Uh, the simultaneous poll or election is a topic on which we have had uh, discussions uh, many a time. So I'm not going into the details of plus and minus or pros and cons of simultaneous elections. But I will definitely reckon you guys that uh, if you come across anything that is uh, talking about simultaneous poll, then you should at least go through it. And if you find something interesting, then you should note it down or it should be there in your in your study list you know because uh, this is something that uh, if you go through positive and negatives or pros and cons of uh, simultaneous election then only you'd be able to form a sort of a solid opinion uh, right uh, then only you'd be able to judge whether this is something that we need or we don't need now the reason why it is in news is because the uh, home minister has clearly said that this is not going to happen in upcoming 2019 general election or this uh, elections that are going to take place in Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Mizoram uh, starting from December 2018 to January 2019. We are going to see this uh, various different states, uh, their five years uh, tenure is going to come to an end. So uh, elections are going to be there and uh, Home Minister has cl clarified this thing that uh, the whole entire process of this uh, Lok Sabha or this general election uh, will be over by may 15 2019 and simultaneous election is not practical at present this has been said by election commissioner chief election commissioner a couple of uh, day op rawat has clarified this thing a couple of days ago uh, or maybe a week or a fortnight ago he talked about this thing and i'm sure we have discussed this item as well now cgi will name ranjan gogoi as uh, his uh, you can say successor uh, this is a sort of convention or it's a sort of protocol or ritual and it is also mandatory too so chief justice of india dipak mishra uh, he will endorse justice ranjan gagoi this is something that has not been said by cji but this is something that has been said by uh, some you know people who are associated with this uh, with this process process or you can say stakeholders as far as uh, judicial system is concerned you have uh, you have president or chief of uh, this bar association and president of bar association and you have senior advocates and other people who have said that it's going to be uh, justice gagoi because uh, as far as this seniority is concerned he's the next in line after cji uh, it's a good news for the whole nation because uh, we have seen that there is a sort of rise you know it's uh, not a little bit but a big jump as far as this it return filing is concerned uh, it has surged 71 percent that is uh, 5.42 crore till august 51 this is a big thing because if the government will not have tax or money coming in then how government is going to look after our environment how government government is going to provide us electricity and road and safety and security and i can go on and on so everything works on 
uh, you know, you have to have natural, uh, you have to have some resources and a very important resource is money. So without money, government cannot operate and money comes from us, from taxpayers. Uh, if, even if you are not earning anything, when, when you buy a packet of biscuit or something, then you are paying that indirect tax. And here, uh, government is talking about uh, this uh, tax return or direct tax uh, from people who are earning and uh, uh, this tax is again a very important contribution of uh, all of us as far as nation building is concerned so here you have a few figures uh, right uh, it's a good news good news for the whole nation and now i have a very important item and i would like you guys to pay 100 percent your attention here uh, this animal that you can see on your screen it's uh, known as a dancing deer or it is known as bro antlered deer and this deer is a very special one because uh, the only place on this planet earth uh, you find this deer is in our country india and that too in manipur's bishnu district uh, where you have this uh, cable lamjao national park that's the only place it's a state animal of manipur of course and if uh, it is uh, it falls under this uh, iucn's red list uh, the category is endangered and as far as india or our laws are concerned protection laws are concerned then it is a schedule one animal wildlife protection act 1972 pay attention to all these items here after a couple of months if i ask you this sort of questions i'm sure many of you will say that we haven't heard anything like this before and this is the reason why people say that upsc or other competitive exams nowadays they ask you everything uh, that is under the sun that is not right right if you follow this uh, 24 hour rule 24 hour seven day and one month rule right or 30 day rule then you will find that uh, things will stay in your mind for a bit of long time that means for when you read or study something today revise that thing within 24 hours revision will take maximum 30 minutes or maybe 15 minutes depending on how good you have read or understood that thing after seven days Right, consciously revise the same thing that you have learned today after seven days go through it again and uh, after 30 days again for the last time go through this thing and i'm sure if you follow this pattern this is a very scientific pattern uh, this is a very proper way of revising if you want you can go for more as well you can revise it 15 days uh, every every fortnight you can revise but if you stick with you know if the minimum that you have to do is this thing now, Gaganyan was uh, something that was in news because uh, recently Prime Minister talked about Gaganyan and uh, a couple of days ago, Isro's uh, chief has also talked about Gaganyan. So I have some important details for you guys, basic details, but uh, these details are something based on which we are going to expand our discussion in near future when we'll find something good about Gaganyan. So Gaganyan is expected to send uh, three persons into space and uh, it is going to be uh, up there three to four hundred kilometers high up in the sky the gslv mk3 will be used as a vehicle to launch this uh, uh, gaganyan and it's uh, not something that is just uh, for india it is for the whole mankind you know when human beings uh, they, they could be coming from any country but when they go out in space uh, they have one identity and that is they are habitat of uh, they are they are living on earth you know their habitat is earth so uh, we all are on the same page or we are same when it comes to space so whatever we are doing if we if we do something if we make a breakthrough like finding ice on moon then that is beneficial for the whole humanity the cost is going to be less when you compare it with other countries uh, right uh, it is just going to be 10,000 crore if you go through China Russia and the USA then you'll find that their missions uh, have been very expensive and uh, there are people out there they say that uh, spending this much money after space is not good what about our poor people and other things now space missions are uh, helpful for each and every one of us may it be using gps or may it be using you know uh, this uh, logistic logistic uh, tracking system and gps your uh, your atms uh, your uh, uh, this uh, your internet uh, your uh, your internet your mobile phone everything you know as a sort of connection with uh, space uh, so it's very important that we keep on innovating and supporting space missions and other items associated with it 
Uh, demonetization report will be tabled soon, has been said by M. Virappa Moili, who is chairperson of Parliamentary Committee on Finance. And I'm sure you, you know this thing that parliamentary committees, they have members from uh, various different parties. So it's uh, a thing that is uh, unbiased, if we can say, because you have opposition and ruling party. They are the ones, right? Members from both the sides are on this, uh, are part of this committee. So all this debate and discussions and everything will take place and after that they will come to a sort of conclusion and the good thing is that so far 69 reports have been submitted by this parliamentary committee and uh, all of them by consensus so this indicates the maturity of this parliamentary committee emis to pinch harder because uh, sbi has increased the marginal cost of funds based lending rate by 20 basis points so it's going to be the loans are going to be a bit expensive you know so that's a thing and uh, CADA and hierarchy of uh, Nuxels is given on your screen. It's not that important for your examination. You won't find question on their hierarchy. But for your overall understanding about terrorism and Nuxalism and other things, uh, it is important for you guys to just have a quick glance over it and understand that it is this management, right? Uh, it is this chain of command or division of work and this sort of things. Uh, you know, these uh, things are also taken into consideration when it comes to this uh, Naxal, you know, when it comes to this Naxal people or how they how they operate things. And uh, uh, vocabulary, uh, rapprochement means uh, establishing or uh, presumption of harmonious relationship. Umbraj is a new word, offense or annoyance, or it is also used for, for uh, pointing out or, you know, for, for uh, addressing this shadow or shade of uh, a tree uh, parochial uh, means uh, something that is related to church or you can say uh, something that is having a very limited or narrow outlook or scope uh, fraternity so in the same way you have fraternize fraternize means uh, to develop relationship and uh, impervious means not allowing fluid to pass through so you can say that my ship is uh, impervious pervious and it's also it also means that you are capable enough you are not easily you know uh, moved by uh, things going on around you and this is your answer here ghana is the right country and uh, dear friends i would like you guys to you know there are a few students out there they do add value to uh, the question they will not just uh, stick with the answer they will also discuss things like zero degree why means if it is going through what is the thing you know yesterday i asked you about a okay, hint was time so what I'm trying to say here is that if you know something about Ghana, right, then please do share. Uh, or it's not just about Ghana, it's about all your map-based answers, right? If you know a little bit here and there about it, then make sure the facts are right. Uh, I will always recommend you guys to go through the facts and do share it with other students as well. And this way, you know, if you give, uh, you know, then you can take it as well. That means if you if you give out, then this will develop a culture and you will learn so many things from your uh, aspirants you know you are not in competition with anyone here the only competition that you are facing through is uh, with you yourself you know you have to you have to fight with your mind you have to fight with all these negative things that are surrounding you you have to find that light that is there inside you it may sound a bit spiritual but I'm right you know when you are swimming you cannot control a person who is you know when you are in a swimming race you cannot do anything about a person who is swimming next to you in competition all you can do is you can focus on your lap so that's what you need to do here it's not if you are sharing then it will be it will be in benefit of other if you are sharing then you know that thing you know so that's the thing and today's map based question is a bit different i have a picture for you and i would like you guys to observe the, this picture and tell me important things about this thing what what is this thing here on your screen and these are your answers i have already asked you questions uh, i beg your pardon i forgot to ask you a question on your artificial meat topic and here is your question here the question is that uh, can you give me the topics of uh, your syllabus that we have discussed today in this uh, special discussion on artificial meat so if you have covered five topics give me the name right uh, and you can also add gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 if this uh, artificial meat topic or the things that we have discussed has any connection with gs1 gs2 gs3 and gs4 as well as uh, 
topics of your syllabus you know do let me know so in this way you'll go through your syllabus as well that's everything in today's discussion enjoy your day jai hind